Hey everyone, welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be making something that is so cute, so handy, has so many pockets, but does not take you so many hours or so much fabric. Today, we're gonna be making the Polly's Purse Plus, and this comes to us from Sophisticated Designs. Let me just show you. Let me just show you how stinking adorable this little guy is. So you might have remembered we've done the Polly's Pocket from Sophisticated Designs. I absolutely love it. It is a smaller version of this with less bells and whistles. The pattern that you're going to purchase to do this actually has two sizes. There's the Polly's Purse and the Polly's Purse Plus. The Plus is the larger version and that's the one we're making today. This is it right here. It is so cute. So we have this adorable flap right here. You lift that up, look at this. There is a clear card slot right here. And then we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight card slot pockets right here. If you're doing the smaller version, the Polly's Purse, I believe it is six card slot pockets, maybe seven, but the large one has eight, which I really, really like. So I'm using waterproof canvas for that right here. And then the exterior, I have my quilt cotton. And then we have this nice little snap here to hold it all together. On the other side, we flip it like this and you have a zip pocket. These pockets are nice and big. You can easily put your cell phone in here. And then you have a main pocket up top, easy peasy. And then turning over back to where our card slot pocket was, you also have another snap slip pocket here. So many pockets, not so much stuff. This is a wristlet, but you could easily put another D ring over here on the side and make it a small crossbody, which I think would be perfect especially if you're taking this somewhere magical, maybe a theme park uh, where you really just don't wanna have to hold on to everything. But this is also a great little bag to put in a bigger bag. Cause a lot of us like to have that where we have like our bigger bag with the sweaters and the headphones and the, you know, the extra supplies and the water bottles and things like that. But when we need to just get the bare necessities, the gift cards, the IDs, the credit cards, things like that, here it is, cell phone, makeup, hand sanitizer, all right here, you can just grab this, take it out put the other stuff in a locker for a moment. You know what I mean? I love having like a smaller bag in a bigger bag because honestly, I love bags. Hello, I'm Jessica and I love bags. So today we're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing. We're gonna be making the plus size because I really do love the size. We will be making the wristlet, but I will give you little hints here and there of what to do to make the crossbody version very, very easy. You can do it very, very easy. Uh, the only change I'm gonna make today is instead of using plastic cam snaps, I'm gonna be using metal fashion snaps. Just kind of zhuzh it up just a little bit. But if you wanna use the plastic snaps, it is a great option. Like I said, it's not a whole lot of stuff. Probably the most time you're going to spend on this is just cutting out the material. Um, and even that doesn't take a long time. This is a great, great project for the beginning of 2023. So as always, thank you so much to Sophisticated Designs for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. You guys have got to go check out their website. They are the coolest projects. I've actually made a couple other projects from them. I just haven't like put together everything yet to film them. But every single time I've made something, it has come together beautifully. Sometimes the measurements, I will tell you some of the patterns do have measurements that are like 5 16th of an inch. Um, they are very precise, but I will tell you that making these projects, I've never had to use a seam ripper. Like it all comes together really perfectly. So take the time to cut everything out, measure it out exactly like the pattern says, and you're gonna be fine. I mean, it's written so well, you're gonna have so much fun making this. I would say this is definitely beginner friendly. I would not suggest using vinyl on this project because there are a lot of layers, like a lot of layers, especially over here on these card slots. You wanna use the thinnest material possible. I'm using a water resistant canvas, which did work well, but it can get bulky. So just think about that, okay? Make sure you watch. I'll show you how thick these, these seams can get, okay? So while I know it is tempting to use a vinyl for all these exterior bits, unless you're really, really comfortable with very thick seams, I would suggest giving it a shot with quilt cotton first. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, please leave them down in the comments section. I will have timestamps for every single step of this. So if there's just one point, you're just like, I just can't quite figure out how to get the card slots or how do you do this clear pocket? I'll have timestamps for all that down below. So just click down in the description of this video and you'll see them all listed or you can just hover over the bottom and just kind of like hover over it and it will show you where the timestamp is. So just click there and it'll take you straight there in the video. All right guys, 
let's get started. So for this pattern, you're going to need 28 inches by 14 inches of exterior fabric. This is a pretty scrappy project, honestly. So uh, like a half a yard. Um, I always like to get at least a yard of material that I like. So, but yeah, 28 inches by 14 inches of exterior material. I'm gonna be using quilt cotton. I would not suggest anything too bulky. I like a vinyl or anything like that that's thick because there are so many layers to this project. Um, you're going to have some real bulk issues uh, I would I would have lighter weight material for this specific project. So from your lining material, I would have about a yard, especially if you are going to be using your lining material for your card slot pockets. Remember, card slot pockets layered up, they do create bulk. It doesn't really matter what kind of method you're using, it is bulky. It's bulky having card slot pockets. So the thinner the material, the better. I will be using a water resistant canvas. I do think that will work well. A waterproof canvas might be a little bit thick for this. So the lightest material you can, um, that's what I would suggest for that. And then I have a small cut of clear vinyl here. The measurements for that will be in the pattern. And then woven interfacing for anything you want to interface. I'm gonna tell you everything I'm interfacing today. But first of all, I don't interface waterproof canvas, water resistant canvas at all. I don't put anything on it. Um, for the quilt cotton, most of the quilt cotton pieces will be interfaced with a woven interfacing, but not all of them. So I will share which ones I am and am not interfacing for you. And then you're gonna also need a small cut of Decoville Heavy for the flap, and you might also want some little scraps of this for installing the snaps. Uh, very small cut of this. And then here's the hardware. Uh, I'll be using metal snaps today. These are metal fashion snaps, which I will have to install using my cam snap press. Um, you could also use plastic snaps, which is what I used the first one, but I just kind of wanted to zhuzh it up a little bit and see what that looks like. So obviously you don't need this many. <laughs> you only need two sets, but this is how I store them. And then you're gonna need two sets of zippers and then two zipper pulls to go with that. I'll be making a wristlet, so I have one swivel hook and one D-ring. You could make this a crossbody if you'd like. Uh, you just need two D-rings and then just two D-ring tabs. And, and I'll try to remember to tell you guys where to insert that if you want to know. And then just one rivet, really. This is just for the wristlet strap, um, totally optional. So here's all the other stuff I'll be using today. Lots and lots of clips. I have a seam ripper as always. I have two marking pens, one that's a vinyl marking pen and one that's an air racing marking pen. I just never know which one I wanna use depending on the fabric I'm using, so I like to have both. A stiletto is a must have in my opinion. This is like my extra hand at the sewing machine. And then I also have the Schmetz 8012 Microtex needles. The thread I'm using today is a Tex 45 weight thread, but I only use this in the needle. In the bobbin, I use a Guterman thread. This is just from Joann's. Uh, it's much easier to wind and sew with. And then I have some double-sided tape here, a turning tool, because this is a smaller bag with little corners. It does help to turn it out with this metal tool, a small one inch by six inch ruler, and then a lighter to clean everything up. All right, so let's work our way through these pattern pieces. I would say probably the most challenging part about this pattern is figuring out the pattern pieces. It is kind of, um, there's a photo in the pattern that lays them all out, which is really helpful, but it, it, it is a little complicated figuring out what is what and where it goes. Uh, so first we have pattern piece A and A1. So pattern piece A, these are both for the main body. Uh, pattern piece A is your exterior fabric, and then pattern piece A1 is your lining. For my exterior fabric, I do have woven interfacing on here. For pattern piece B, this is also gonna go with the main body. This is kind of gonna go like this. So bottom, zipper, top. So if you have orientation, think about that. However you orient this pattern piece A, do the same thing for B. Um, and so I just have one of those. This is quilt cotton and it does have the woven interfacing on it. And then we have pattern piece A2, C, and C1. So A2, okay, so this gets a little complicated. A2 is a lining cut, so it's my waterproof canvas. Pattern piece C is an exterior cut, and this is for the back of the bag, I believe. Uh, and this is the exterior quilt cotton with the woven interfacing. And then pattern piece C1 are the main pocket lining panels, which go in the very center with the zipper. Uh, and that's two cuts of your lining material. Next up, we have pattern piece D, which is the slip pocket. And it is just the lining or fabric, whatever you want. I'm using the waterproof canvas for that cut. And then the D-ring, which is actually pattern piece J, but I got confused by the D-ring part, but this is the D-ring cut. Um, it's just a square. I do have it interfaced with the woven interfacing. So pattern pieces E all go with the flap. First we have pattern piece E, you're gonna have one exterior cut and one lining cut. Just remember when the flap goes down like this, this is the orientation, and when you open it up, this is the orientation. So if you have a lining cut that has a print, make sure it's opposite oriented than the exterior cut. P2 
Piece E1 is your Decoville Heavy, your stabilizer piece. Piece E2 is the clear vinyl, which is that cool clear vinyl pocket. If you don't want to use clear vinyl because it is pretty bulky uh, and it can be a little difficult to sew. So if you want to do this but you're not quite ready for the clear vinyl, you can use mesh. So By Annie has a great mesh that I love to use. You could use a mesh cut instead of the clear vinyl and it will work just the same. And then piece E3, you're going to have two of these. These are the bias pieces that are going to cover the top and bottom edges of that clear vinyl or mesh. Uh, and this is both quilt cotton and I did not add interfacing to this. With this binding, with the combination of this binding and that clear vinyl and all the other layers, you want to keep things as thin as possible. Next up are our F pattern pieces and this all has to do with the card slot pockets. So first you have kind of like the base of the card slot pockets and this just stays as is. We're going to draw these lines onto here and we're going to attach all the card slots here. And then you're going to have piece F1 which is your card slot pockets um, and you have seven of them. So this is the cut for them and I've already prepped the other six because that does take a little bit of work. But I'm going to show you how to prep one but you're going to end up having seven of these that we just attach to the card slot panel over here. And then card slot panel F2 is your last pocket. So this actually goes on the bottom and when you cut this you're going to have it kind of like this. So think about the pieces you want to use now. You can alternate different colors here, which I think would look really cool. Uh, just remember you want to use as light a material as possible. I'm using the water resistant canvas for these card slot pockets, but even then, I mean, you see once you start stacking this up, it gets bulky. It is bulky. You're going to have some thickness here. Um, and then for this one here, I do have it interfaced with the woven interfacing. Remember, I'm making the plus version of this, so this has more card slot pockets than the smaller version of this purse. All right, and then we have the card slot panels. This is pattern piece G. You're gonna have two of these. Um, orientation wise, I do suggest that you orient them like this because especially, because your flap is gonna go right down the middle of this. So if your flap is oriented height wise, then you also wanna orient these height wise. Um, so you have two cuts of this. I'm using quilt cotton, both interfaced with the woven interfacing. And then last we have our zipper tabs. We have one piece for H1, and then we have two pieces over here for H2. I did adjust the size of this. I added it a quarter of an inch to the smaller measurement to make these squares, which I found was just a little bit more helpful. Um, none of these are interfaced. And last but not least is our wristlet strap. The wristlet strap is going to depend on the size of hardware you're using. I'm using half inch hardware today, so my wristlet strap is one inch wide. The length stays the same for all the wristlet straps. If you want to make this a crossbody strap, you definitely can. Just make it a longer strap and add a slider. We have a video going over how to make crossbody straps if you want to do that, uh, but I'm going to be keeping it a wristlet today. So let's get started with our wristlet strap. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your strap and fold it in half. I like to fold it wrong sides together, or you can grab a marking tool and just mark the midpoint going along the center of your strap. If you're using quilt cotton here, you can also grab an iron. I might do that in a minute, we'll see. So once you have that midpoint mark, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold the long raw edges, wrong sides together up to meet that midpoint mark. And again, an iron might be easier or you can use clips here. I'm just going to go down the whole length doing this. And then once you have one side done, repeat that for the other side. And then I like to just fold it all in half as I'm folding it. So I pull the other raw edge down to meet the middle and then fold the whole strap in half folded like a hot dog bun and then just combine my clips. Okay. Once you have it all folded and clipped, grab your swivel hook and Get your swivel hook on there. So we're just gonna thread it through, moving clips and moving our hook down towards the middle kind of, so it's out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna get it a good amount out of the way here. All right. Now you're going to unclip right by the very ends, just like that, and you're gonna open up the ends of the material and you're gonna fold the whole unit right sides together. And when you do this, just check your swivel hook should be on the outside like this. And we're just going to combine those short edges together and they're completely open. They're not folded at all. See, the fabric is completely flat. We're just going to clip them together like this. And now we're going to sew right along the short edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn, grab some scissors and just cut down the corners to reduce the bulk. Just like that. And now press open that seam and then refold down the long raw edges back, wrong sides together, 
and then refold your little hot dog bun and add your clips if you need to. So now you should see we have a nice little circle here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around both edges, both of the long edges, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and just top stitch. It's always great if you could start and stop your stitches right at that seam because it is bulky and you're not gonna see the back stitching stitches there. Um, and just to make sure you're stitching so the top stitching is on the right side and that's gonna be the same size as your swivel hook. How cute is that? So now take your swivel hook and bring it down to where that seam is. So you see whenever I fold this, it gets nice and folded everywhere. But if I try to fold it right here where that seam is, it's not gonna fold. That's where we want our swivel hook to go. We're gonna tuck it in right over there. Okay, so I have my swivel hook and then I have the seam right beneath it, just like that. I'm gonna grab a clip. And now I'm going to use a rivet to hold this in place, but you could also just sew right here back and forth and you'd be fine. So I have my rivet over here and I have my hole punch. And when you're punching the hole, if you're doing this, don't punch the hole right on the seam because then you just opened it up. So you wanna punch the hole beneath it. So just below the seam, between the top stitching, my goal is always to never punch a hole in stitches. All right, got the hole punch and I'm just gonna insert my rivet like that. And then I'm gonna grab my rivet press that has the die for this on here and just press it down. And there we go, easy peasy, nice and quick. Don't have to worry about wonky stitches. I love my rivet press. You can put this to the side now. So now we're gonna work on our D-ring. So grab your D-ring tab and your D-ring. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our D-ring tab in half, wrong sides together. Give it a little finger press, open it up, fold those parallel raw edges, wrong sides together to meet that middle fold, and then fold the whole D-ring in half like a hot dog bun and grab some clips to hold it in place. And now let's go top stitch along both long edges of our D-ring tab. There you go, now take your D-ring and just slip your D-ring over that top stitched little tab and then fold it in half, add a clip, and you can put this to the side. For my zipper tape, I need six and seven eighths of an inch zipper tape and eight and seven eighths of an inch zipper tape. Two cuts like that. Okay, so the longer zipper goes on the top of the bag and the smaller zipper goes on the front. So if you have different zipper pulls and you have a preference on where those go, just think about that and then add your zipper pulls. And if you're using zipper tape, don't forget to melt the ends of your zipper tape so that they don't start fraying and create a mess while you're working with them. Okay, so first we're gonna work with the longer zipper tape, which is the top of the bag zipper tape. And you're gonna grab your H1 pattern piece. And on the edge of the zipper tape that remains closed. So you see, whenever I close my zipper tape, my zipper pull goes to the left. When I open it, this end will open. See how this end opens, but this side over here stays closed. The side that stays closed is the side we're going to put our zipper tab on. So take your zipper tab and lay it right side down. The shorter edge is gonna go against the edge of the zipper tape and just lay them right sides together and clip in place. And now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn, what we're gonna do is pretty much take this and wrap it around, but we also need to fold in this bottom raw edge. So fold in the bottom raw edge of your fabric. I like to just have it kind of meet the edge of the zipper tape and then fold the folded bit back. And you might need to adjust this a little bit because you want it to meet up with the front of the zipper tape or even be a little bit lower than it. <clears throat> so once you fold the fabric, it should cover the stitches on the back of the zipper tape. And then just clip it down like that. And now we're going to top stitch the innermost folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. There we go. If your zipper tab is just a little bit wider than your zipper tape, you can trim it down to make sure it's just one width. So this zipper tape is now ready to go. You can put it to the side. Now we're gonna work on these smaller zipper tapes. So grab your four cuts of H2. I only cut two of these for some reason. I gotta go cut two more. And I'll just tell you, because I'm using number five zipper tape, I like to cut these one and three eighths by one and three eighths. So each one of these is a square all sides being one and three eighths of an inch 
long. So now we're going to take one of our little squares and lay it right side down against either side of your zipper tape and clip together. Flip it over, take another square and lay it right side along the back of the zipper tape and line it up with the other square and just clip together just like that. So you have like a little sandwich here. Do the same thing on the other side. And now we're gonna sew along both of these clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have those sewn in place, pull both of the fabrics back, wrong sides together, just like that. And you might wanna iron this, or you can just grab some clips, just get the, all the edges to match up. Do this for both sides. And now we're going to top stitch along all four edges of these little tabs at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there you go. Isn't that cute? I love my little bee in the green. This is gonna be a pretty one, guys. This is gonna be pretty. So you can put this zipper to the side now. So now get all of your pattern pieces that are for A and for B, and then also grab that smaller zipper we just finished. As usual, I forgot to mention my bag tag in the beginning of the video. Uh, we're gonna place the bag tag on pattern piece A, on this exterior pattern piece right here. So what I like to do is just mark the midpoint on the top straight edge of pattern piece A. I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape and we're gonna measure about one and a half inches down from this middle mark. And once I have that measured, I'm going to grab some tape and put it on the back of my bag tag and then just remove the paper from that tape and then using your ruler and your eyeballs, do your best to center it. There we go. So that's where my bag tag is going to go. And now I'm just gonna go top stitch around all four edges of my tag. Okay, so now I like to mark the midpoint of my zipper tape. So I'm just going to fold this in half and use a marking tool or you can use scissors. If you use scissors to cut the midpoint, then you're going to also need to make sure you use a lighter to burn down that cut area or else you could have some fraying over time there, which would be so sad. So now when the zipper is closed, it's gonna to go to the left. See, open goes to the right, close goes to the left. Grab your bottom panel piece A and your zipper and then flip your zipper right side down. And I just like to match up the midpoint first and clip together and clip along the entire top edge here. And now let's baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab A1, which is the lining cut of the same size, and you're gonna lay that right side down on top of the back side of the zipper and line it up with that top straight edge that you just sewed and clip in place. And now we're gonna sew along this long clipped edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn down, let's trim down the corners to reduce bulk, and this really does reduce bulk. This is something I wish I remember to do more often. And now take your lining and flip it back so it's wrong sides together with the exterior. You can use an iron here to get this nice and flat. I'll just be using my fingers. I like to line up the bottom edges and the bottom corners first and clip together. And then I work on this top over here. I'm actually gonna take my little stiletto here and on the other side of it I have this little wooden bit and I can use that to flatten this down. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The pattern does suggest you actually start on the side and go up and then top stitch and then end on the side. That way you don't have any back stitches showing in the end. Isn't that so cute? So now grab pattern piece B. And if you have a direction, make sure you think about that now. And we're going to lay pattern piece B right side down on top of the top edge of the zipper tape and then clip in place. And now let's sew along that top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, before we flip it up, you can trim down these corners. Just make sure you don't cut any stitching. And then flip that top strip up and give it a good press, either with your fingers or with an iron. Just make sure it's nice and as flat as you can get it. There we go. Now you're gonna take pattern piece A2 and lay it right side up and then take your little zipper pocket and lay it right on top of it and it should all pretty much line up. If it's not exact, then it's not exact. But I'm going to use clips here to just clip it all in place. We have not top stitched this top straight panel yet. We're gonna do that in just a moment. 
Okay, so this gives you some pretty funny instructions on how to top stitch this. So it says to top stitch by going along this top edge right above the zipper first, and then go around the bottom and then all the way back up and then top stitch along the top edge as well. So this one right here above the zipper, that's a top stitch. The rest of it is really just basting all the material together. All of it's gonna be at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. sweet is that? Open it up. See, now you have it all nice and stitched. It's cute little pocket. I love it. So now keeping that zipper pocket, grab your main zipper and then grab your pattern piece C's, the one exterior and the two lining pieces. Take your zipper pocket, we're just calling this A now, and lay it right side up and then grab your top zipper and both zippers should close in the same direction. So just like this. Now we're going to measure in from the right edge, five eighths of an inch and make a mark. Then take your main top zipper and flip it right side down so it's right sides together with the A panel and line up that zipper end with that 5 eighths of an inch mark so it doesn't go all the way to the edge. The zipper end stops where that mark is and clip together just like this all the way to the end. Now grab one of your C lining panels and you're going to lay this right side down on top of the back of your zipper lining it up completely and clip in place. Don't baste your zipper down because we're not going to sew it completely on. So just do your best to keep everything together with the clips. You can use double-sided tape if you need to. There we go. So now flip this over so you're looking at the back side of your zipper pocket that you've already made. And on the right side here, you're gonna measure in 5 eighths of an inch and make a mark. There we go, so we have our 5 eighths of an inch. Make sure everything is still lined up and clipped back together. So now we're gonna start at the opposite side from where our mark is and we're going to sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down until you get to that mark. One thing you'll wanna do before then as well, open up your zipper a little bit and spread apart the open end of your zipper tape. Once you get to this mark right here, you're going to keep your needle down, but then you're going to take your zipper tape and you're going to rotate it 90 degrees just like that and then continue sewing. And then we're gonna sew over the little edge once more just to really hold it in place. So the zipper teeth will not be coming out the side over here. They will be pulled in like this and the zipper teeth will be coming out the top edge. Alrighty, once you have that stitched, go ahead and trim down the zipper overhang Trim down the corners a bit without cutting your stitching. So now let's open this up and we want the seam to go behind the A panel. So that's not really the direction it wants to go in, but that's the direction it needs to go in. It's gonna be, see the seam naturally wants to go towards this lining. We don't want it to go there. We need to fold it down so it's going behind the exterior fabric. There we go. And so you can see my lining is over here on the right and then I have my exterior over here on the left. And now we're going to top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once again, we can start on the side and that way we can back stitch over here, go along the zipper and then go down the side a little bit and back stitch. Okay, so now take that lining and fold it down so you have your zippers just like this. And then take your exterior piece C and we're going to lay it right side down, right side against the other exterior piece, right sides with the top zipper and then just line it up with the edges on the right and line it up with the top of your zipper and clip along the zipper tape. And now you can flip this over and grab your remaining lining PC and lay it right side down along the back edge of your zipper tape and just line it up completely with that top edge of the exterior material. You can definitely use double-sided tape here to hold it all together if you'd like or just use clips like I am. And so we're looking at the back of the lining side that we just clipped in place and then we have the overhang zipper over here. We wanna measure in 5 eighths of an inch from this right edge of our lining and make a mark. So once again, we're going to start from the other edge that does not have the mark and we're gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once we get to this mark, leave your needle down in that position and then fold back the zipper teeth so that the zipper teeth are now coming out of the top instead of the bottom side over here. And then continue all the way to the edge, backstitch, and then just go over that zipper teeth one more time. 
Okay, once that's sewn, let's trim down the zipper excess and then cut the corners. So now we're gonna flip this back and it might be helpful to close the zipper. And just like before, we don't wanna top stitch through both the exterior and the lining. So move the lining so that it's behind the A panel over here where all the zippers are. Make sure the seam is behind this exterior panel right here. And once again, we can start on the side and we're just gonna top stitch along this back panel. Again, the lining panel is over here. We're not top stitching through both of them. And we're gonna do this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. How cute is this? So this is pretty much what it's gonna look like in the end on this side. And then this side will have all the other stuff, the card slots and the flap. How sweet is this? Ugh. Okay, you can put this to the side now. So the pattern is going to give you two different methods for doing the card slot pockets. I'm doing method one. So first thing we're gonna do is build our card slot pockets. Like I've shown you in the beginning, I've already built six of them, but I'm gonna show you how to build the seventh. Put these other pieces to the side. So first thing you're gonna do is take your F1 pattern piece and fold it right sides together, lining up those two short edges and then clip together. And now let's go sew along that short edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn, trim down the corners, just like that. And now we're going to, I'm gonna finger press open that seam just like this. And then we're gonna flip this whole unit right side out so the seam is on the inside. And then when you do that, try to get the seam in the center and then fold your unit flat. So it's just like that. So I'm gonna grab my iron now and press this with an iron to flatten it out as much as possible. And then once you do that with waterproof canvas, you can just put something on it. I usually put a ruler on it, just something kind of heavy while it cools. And if you do that, it'll cool very crisp and flat. So you see it left an indention of my, of my bowl, that's okay. So now we have it just like this. And now all we have to do is pick one of the folded edges and top stitch along that edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And there you go. You're gonna repeat that with your other six pieces until you have seven card slot pockets. Now grab your card slot panel piece F and what you wanna do is transfer all these lines to this. So what I do is I just kinda of line it up on the side so there's like a little gap here. And then I use an air racing marker and I just mark a tick right along the edge of my material where every single one of those lines are, just like that. And then I just move the material over a little bit to the left and I do the same thing on the right side. There you go. And then I'll take a ruler and I'll connect each set of ticks and draw a straight line. You could also just grab a ruler and measure the placement for all of these lines and then just use a ruler to draw these lines, whichever is easier. So now grab one of your pocket pieces and we're gonna start at the top line. And with the bottom edge, so that's the one that does not have top stitching, you're going to line up that creased bottom edge with that first marking. And I like to clip these on the side to hold them in place. There we go. And now we're just going to stitch down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, that one's stitched down. So now you're gonna grab your next pocket and you're going to line up the bottom edge with the next line, just keeping it as straight as possible, always checking the sides to make sure nothing is crooked. And this is where I think it'd be cool if you had like different colors and you kind of alternated. And now we're going to stitch down this along the bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to continue doing that for the rest of my pockets as well. Well, you're gonna do most of these lines, you will have one line left over on the very bottom that does not have a pocket. Okay, so now we have our seven little pockets here and we're going to attach our final pocket, which is the fabric. So I'm going to lay, my card slot pockets are open on the left. So the top of the card slot pockets are here on the left side. And then I'm going to take my material and I'm gonna rotate it. So the top of my material, if it's a directional print, is over here. The top of my card slot pockets are over here. They're opposite, okay? So I'm gonna flip this right side down and line it up with the bottom edge of my card slot pockets, which is the top edge of that piece of fabric and clip together. So now we're gonna sew along this at an 
inch seam allowance because of the size that I'm using. If you're doing a different size poly purse, you're gonna do a different seam allowance. You might also notice that if you measure from the bottom edge here of our card slot pocket to that last line, it's an inch. So you're pretty much just sewing along that last marked line. So now we're gonna pull up that fabric piece. So the print here, we're gonna pull up that and I'm gonna trim this fabric down, but I'm not trimming down my lining fabric. I'm just gonna trim down this fabric here to reduce bulk. Now we're gonna take this piece of fabric and we're gonna fold it down so that the short edges meet with the bottom of our card slot pocket lining panel and clip together just for a moment, okay? And then press this down. And if you wanna get an iron, you can iron along this top edge here because you wanna get it nice and pressed. I'm gonna use clips also to help. And now we're gonna to go top stitch along the top of this little, this little crease here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is what we have. I did not stitch down this bottom edge. And you can see, I mean, this is, that's not thin. That's pretty bulky. So that's gonna, it's gonna be difficult to sew through. Um, so you gotta think about that when you're making these, po these pockets here. It's, it's a, even with thin material, it's still bulky. Okay, so now we're going to install a snap. Since I'm using metal snaps, I have my presser, I have my, die set specifically for these snaps. And we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch down from the middle of this bottom pocket. So I'm just gonna fold this bottom pocket in half so I can find the midpoint. And I'm gonna use an air erasing marker to mark the midpoint. And then I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch down from that and mark a dot. So for this spot, we're using the stud end, which a lot of times is the male end. So I have my two pit bits here that go with the male section. They're both like little nubs. One's a short nub, one's a long nub. And I'm gonna see if I can just make a hole with my stiletto. And so I'm only going through this one piece of fabric. I'm not going through both pieces of fabric here. Only this one piece of fabric. I'm just gonna kind of make a hole with my stiletto. And then I'm gonna take the longer stud piece and push it through that hole. There we go. I'm gonna take the shorter stud piece and I'm gonna lay it on top, just like that. So now I need to get the correct dies. So the bottom die is this pokey die and the top die is this one here that has like a little hole in the center of it. Insert those into my press and then carefully take my unit, lay it so that the pokey bit goes up through the back piece and then just put my shorter bit on top of it and press it down. And I forgot to put a piece of stabilizer with this. I had meant to grab a piece of stabilizer and put that in between these and the fabric so that it's just a little bit beefier. I forgot to do that. I think we'll be okay. These are pretty small snaps, but we'll try to remember that for the next one. Okay, now get this as flat as you can. I know, it's bulky. This is bulky. Get everything lined up really nicely because we're going to baste stitch this now. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to baste stitch along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You might wanna change your needle to a thicker, stronger needle. Um, you also might wanna adjust your tension because this is, I mean, that's thick, oh dear. Okay, that was okay, that didn't go too bad. But we're going to add even more to the sides, I know. Now we're gonna grab our two G pieces. Make sure you look at the direction of your fabric. It should all be in the same direction here. And we're going to lay our G pieces right side down along the long edges of those card slots and clip together. Do the same thing on the other side. You might find that your G pieces end up a little short and it's the same size as the length of this, but because we have such a big hill here, it, you know, creates the G piece needing to be a little bit longer, but you'll be okay. Just try to stretch it. All right, the two hardest bits next. We're gonna sew along both of these edges at a quarter inch seam allowance first, and then we're gonna top stitch. I know, just do your best. So if you made it this far and you're like, that was close and I'm worried about my needle breaking, 
You can skip this next step. You don't have to top stitch if you don't want to. If you don't top stitch, just make sure you press this really well with the iron to get it as flat as possible over here. Um, because when we top stitch this, we are adding again another layer. We're folding it back, right? If you do choose to top stitch, be very aware where this edge is here because you're gonna be top stitching through all these layers. But if you get too close to this edge, your needle could very easily slip and then it's gonna break. So I like to actually make it just like less than an eighth of an inch. I just try to get as close to this edge as possible just to make sure my needle doesn't slip like that. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and give this a try and top stitch on both of these edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. But like I said, if you don't wanna do that, grab an iron, press it, and I think you'll be okay. Okay, we got it. Now we're gonna grab piece D, which is the slip pocket. And then we're going to take piece D and lay it right side down so that the straight edge matches up with the left edge of your card slot pocket. And just line up those edges and clip together. And now let's sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have those sewn, go ahead and clip the corners just like that. And then flip the lining and exterior panels wrong sides together. And if you want, you can iron this edge, but clips are good for me. And now I'm just gonna top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now you can flip this over and trim down the card slot pocket panel as necessary. So it's a little tricky to do because of that big hill here. So clip along the edges, the short edges first. And so for my card slot pockets, they're just like a little bit wider than they need to be, which is fine. You could save this for later if you want. You don't have to sew this. You don't have to trim this down just yet. I'm just gonna trim down the corners a little bit, but I'll end up trimming down this overhang as well later. I had the same thing happen on the other one. So now on the back side of this card slot pocket, we're going to find the midpoint, which is actually kind of hard to do because you can't really fold it but do your best to find that midpoint and mark it with an erasable marking tool. Don't cut it or anything because this is a finished edge. So once you have that midpoint marked, mark a dot that is 5 eighths of an inch down from that midpoint. So now grab your main body panel and we're gonna work on the exterior side here that doesn't have any zippers or anything on it over on the right. Find the midpoint along the top edge of that back panel. And then since I'm using the larger size here, I'm going to measure one inch from that midpoint mark down. So essentially what we're doing is we're marking placement spots for our snaps. So I have my mark here and I have my mark here. So when I put them together, this is kind of how it's going to end up and they'll snap closed. If you just want this to be a slip pocket, you don't have to put a snap there at all. But if you want the snap, this is, this is the idea here. So I like to just double check that it's all good by putting my dots together. Okay, just wanna make sure the sides line up, the left and the right sides line up, bottom edges look good. Okay, that all looks good. So now we're going to make our holes. So I'm just gonna use a stiletto to make these holes. Uh, if you want, you can use a hole punch. So make the holes in both of these pockets. Remember, we're not going through any lining on this side, just the exterior, and on this one, it's only the lining. I'll remember this time to grab some scrap stabilizer. This is the Decoville Heavy, but you could also use Decoville Light, Fusible Fleece, whatever you like. So I'm gonna grab a piece of that and make a hole in there as well. And this just makes it so that as you use the snap, it doesn't rip the material. It just beefs it up a bit. Okay, I'm trying to remember. This is C and this is D. Okay, this is C, this is D. So on D, we're going to put the stud, which is also referred to as the male end of the snap. So I'm gonna grab my two pieces for the male end, just like I did previously. There we go. And I'm gonna push the bottom male end piece, which is the longer prong, through my stabilizer. And then I'm gonna push that little unit through the hole in my lining, through the back side of my lining. Okay, so there's that. So let me grab my press. And I still have the same die set on here for the stud. So I'm just going to take the top part of the stud and press this down. So there's this. So then this will just snap into the other part on this C panel, which this is a C, right? Yes, this is a C. So now I'm going to grab the pieces for the socket, which is also referred to the female side. So it's like a little donut and then a pretty little cap. We're not gonna see that pretty little cap here, but we have it. 
because these dies are only for the stud and now I'm going to get the dies for the socket which is like a little bowl and then like a fat prongy bit. <laughs> I'm going to grab another piece of scrap stabilizer and punch a hole in it and then I'm going to grab the cap because that's going to go on the back because I want the donut on the front so it can snap together with the other piece. So the cap, I'm going to have it go through that scrap piece of Decoville Heavy and then I'm going to push that through the hole on my C panel and then I put the donut over that. So the donut is on the right side of the fabric and then I'm just going to insert all of this donut side up into my press and press it down. So when I take the card slot panel, snap it in, there we go. How cute is that? It all mostly lines up. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks so good. I love this. So once I have it snapped in, now we want to just clip everything together. All these panels together. Remember, the lining is still all to the left over here. It's just the back of the material for the exterior. Just clip everything together. I always find that this edge over here doesn't all line up and that's okay. Just clip it as much as you can. Now we're gonna look at the back side of this and we're going to base this on an eighth of an inch seam allowance just using the topmost panel as your guide. Okay, once that's basted it on, flip it over and if you have any overhang now, go ahead and trim it down. You don't trim down that C panel, but we're trimming down the card slot pocket a little bit. So this is looking so good. Now we just have to make the flap and we're about done. So set this to the side for just a moment. Let's grab all of our flat pieces. So we have our bias tape, we have our clear vinyl, we have our stabilizer, we have our main flap panels. So the first thing we're gonna do is make the bias tape. So for this, just fold your material wrong sides together. An iron here is actually going to be preferable. I'm gonna go ahead and grab mine. So fold the material wrong sides together, long sides together, and press with your iron. And then open it up and refold those long raw edges, wrong sides together to meet that middle line. I like to do them one at a time so I don't burn my fingers. Do the same thing on the other side. I always like to kind of press it down with my fingers while it's cooling because then it cools nice and crisp. And then fold the whole thing in half like a hot dog bun and press with your iron. Here we go. So repeat that with the other little bias tape. So now grab your piece of clear vinyl. And sometimes clear vinyl will have like a little backing sheet on it. That's what this one has. Um, I like to hold on to that because sewing with vinyl can get sticky. So I'm gonna just pull it back a little bit and then on the top edge of my clear vinyl, I'm gonna wrap around one of my pieces of bias tape, making sure I'm lining it up with the edges as well. And I'm going to clip this in place. So it's just hugging around that top edge. Now I'm just gonna pull up the bottom edge. So I'm just separating my paper from it. And I'm going to add the other piece of bias tape to the bottom edge. And now I'm gonna top stitch along the innermost fold on both the top and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When I do that, I just kind of fold the paper out of the way and top stitch. I don't really want the clear vinyl sticking to the metal bottom of my sewing machine. If you have any overhang of the bias, go ahead and trim it down. Keep everything the same size. You know, my fabric stretches when I do this, especially since there's no interfacing on it. So I'm gonna hold on to this piece of paper to help. You could also use a piece of tissue paper, um, parchment paper, things like that to help with preventing stickiness. So now I'm gonna grab the lining part of my flap and I'm going to lay it so that the rounded bit is up top and the flat bit is on the bottom. And we're gonna measure 5 eighths of an inch from this bottom straight edge and we're gonna mark a line on the right side of our material with some sort of a air erasing fabric marker. Now we're gonna take our clear vinyl and we're gonna have the bias tape on the top and the bottom and we're gonna line up the bottom with that line. You'll notice that it is wider than your flap. That's okay, just try to get it as straight as possible and clip along the sides to hold it in place. And now we wanna base down the sides and then top stitch along this bottom edge all the way on the bottom here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Look how cute that is. Okay, now I'm gonna trim down the excess clear vinyl and binding, just like this. It's easier if you look at the back of your material to do that. Now we're gonna take our lining card slot panel and our exterior card slot panel. 
and we're going to lay them right sides together. I'm going to insert this after they're already sewn together. If you want, you can fuse it on now. I just think it's easier to do it afterwards. So we're gonna lay these right sides together and line up all the edges and let's clip along the sides, the top, uh, but don't, don't clip along the straight bottom edge because you don't want that to confuse you later. So just clip along all the other edges. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around the sides and the curved bit. At a quarter inch seam allowance, do not sew along the straight edge here, just the sides and the curved bit. Uh, and then do a second row of stitching, especially since we have that thicker clear vinyl, uh, just outside of that. So just closer to the raw edge from that first row of stitching. So once those are sewn, go ahead and trim down the corners. And then I like to just cut little slits along the rounded bit. If you have pinking shears, that's a great time to use them. I don't have pinking shears. So I work with what I got. So now we're going to flip this right side out, nice and gently. You don't wanna rip anything because it can be pretty stiff with that clear vinyl in there. This is a good time to grab your turning tool and help really smooth out the edges. So now that we have it all smoothed out, grab your heavy weight interfacing and just insert it in there. If it's a little too wide, you can always trim it. Just try to get it all the way in there. So once you have it in there, then we're gonna go around and I like to look from the exterior side and just flatten out the seam and clip in place all the way around. Trying to get these rounded bits as smooth as possible. Okay. Make sure it's nice and flat. I'll press it too once I'm done top stitching. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch around all of the edges here, including the shorter edge. And we're gonna do it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The problem is I like to top stitch with this side up. So this is going to stick to my bed of my machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of fold this piece of paper in half and just keep it underneath it, covering that clear vinyl, and that should help. So we're gonna top stitch around all the edges at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. How cute is that? And then you just have a little, you flap is down, it goes like that, flap is up, put your little card in there. That's so cute, I love it. So I'm going to attach the snap on this at the end so that way I know exactly where it goes. So I'm skipping the snap part for now, but we will come back to it. So now really all we gotta do is put it all together. So lay your unit so that the two lining panels are again going towards the side over here with the zipper panel over here, card slot panel here. And your flap is just gonna go over your card slot panel centered just like that. So when you lift it up, card slots down, pretty. So you can just eyeball this or you can measure it out. I like to just look from the top and I'm looking at where the seams are and just making sure I have the same amount of overhang on both sides. You could also find the midpoint between these two seams. Let's do that instead. That'll be a little bit more accurate. So I'm just gonna fold the card slot panel in half so that I can find that midpoint. And then I'll mark that with a marking pen. And then I'll fold my flap in half and find the midpoint. There we go. And now with the flap exterior right side up, I'm gonna match up those midpoints and clip together. Isn't that cute? And you flipped it up, cards. Oh, I just love this pattern, it's so cute. So now let's just base this flap down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once we have that done, we can put the D-ring on. So I have my little D-ring here and we're pretty much just going to tuck it in between the top of this little slip pocket here and the side of the flap, just like that. And if you wanted to make this a proper crossbody, you could add another one just right here, same spot, just on the other side, and then you would have two D-rings and you can make it a cute little purse. So I'm gonna base this on now at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is so cute. So okay, last thing is just put it all together. So take your two main panels, you'll have two big main panels and then two lining panels, just like that. Take your two main panels and lay them right sides together. Let's move both zipper pulls to the center and then match up at their seams over here, which are nice and skinny so that they're not too bulky. That's fantastic. And then just go along the sides, clipping together. Make sure you're on the other side, you also match them up at the seams first and then clip along the sides. And once you have the exterior part clipped, go ahead and clip the lining panels as well. 
So now let's mark between a five and seven eighths inch opening on the bottom here. It's gonna be smaller if you're making the smaller version. I find that five inches is fine. So the overall idea of sewing this together is that this opening will remain unsewn because we're gonna turn everything out through that. Make sure your zippers are in the middle. Um, on the lining side, we're going to sew at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. On the exterior side, we're going to sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. You might find a zipper foot is easiest so you can get nice and close to the zipper ends over here without worrying about moving around anywhere. You do wanna go two rounds around the exterior. So the way the pattern has it suggested is that you start on the exterior side, you go around at a quarter inch seam allowance, make your way to the lining, increase to 3 8 of an inch, Backstitch at the first mark, skip over the opening, backstitch at the second mark, continue 3 eighths of an inch until you get to the seam again, and then do a second row of stitching just outside that first row to make sure everything is just not gonna pull on the thread too much. So that's what I'm going to do. We did it. So one thing it suggests is trimming down right here where that seam is, um, just cause it gets a little bulky there and it can be kind of difficult when you turn it out to get it nice and cute over there. So just a, just a little, just a little shave down helps. And then I also like to trim down the seam allowance on the lining, nice and thin. And the lining can handle a thinner seam allowance cause it's thinner material, doesn't have a whole lot going on. Just make sure you don't trim down where the opening is. And then on the exterior, we're gonna just trim just little tiny slits in the corners. Not Nothing too deep, just like eighth of an inch. That's about it. I don't even know if it really does anything, honestly, but it's a habit I have. So you can see, there we go. All right, now let's just turn this right side out. Be very gentle. You can reach in and just open your zipper all the way. It is very stiff, so again, be gentle, take your time. You're probably gonna have to iron this, that's okay. All right, once you have it turned out, put your hand in, carefully pull the flap out. You might find using that turning tool will be helpful here. Just give it a good finger press all the way around. Pop out the corners up top. Oh yeah, that's looking so good. All right, so now I'm gonna close the lining and then I'm gonna finish the snap on the flap. So to close the lining, all you have to do is really just flatten out this seam as much as you can, put your fingers inside the hole and just kind of tug a little bit and you'll see the raw edges start kind of folding down on their own. If they need a little help, go ahead and smush them down in there. You just wanna fold them down. I'm not that precise on how much I fold it down. And I use clips to hold it in place, we just don't want any raw edges peeking out over here. So now we're gonna top stitch along the clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have that stitched in place, go ahead and put your lining in your adorable little bag. This is so stinking cute. Oh, I just love it. My little bee and the flowers. I'm so ready for spring. Okay, so now we just have to add the snap on the flap. So we're going to push this down. And one way you can do it is just kind of center it as best you can. Get it the way you want it to look. And you can just kind of lift it up. For this one, I actually, I can just like mark my air racing marker on that little nub and then just push it back down. And then that transfers to my exterior. So I'm gonna grab a hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole where that is. And then I'm going to grab the socket combos for this, which is a cap and then a little bit that looks like a donut. Where is it? There we go. So the cap goes through the exterior because this time it is going to be seen. So it goes on the front and then the donut goes on the lining side, just like that. And make sure you have the right dies in place. Insert this into your press and press down. And there we go. A cute little flap. Grab our wristlet strap. 
attach that to our D-ring. How stinking adorable is this? It's so cute. I hope you guys love making this. All right, this might be one of the prettiest things I've ever made. I know I say that a lot, but oh my goodness, look at this. I feel like this is a really fancy version, just the little, little things like using a metal fashion snap. This looks so fancy, doesn't it? And it, I'll be, it's not. <laughs> like I didn't use really fancy material or anything. I mean, this is a beautiful fabric. I believe this is from Rifle Paper Company. And obviously you guys know how much I love the B hardware. And then I've got my little honeycomb hardware up here at the top. I mean, I love this. It just, it looks very fancy but it just doesn't require a lot of stuff for a lot of time. So I hope you love making this. If you've already made one, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Um, if you post this on social media and you want me to see, just make sure you tag me. I'm at Oakley Roots. You can also use the hashtag Oakley Roots Toots. And I keep track of that all the time to see what people are making. Um, I'm very excited about it. I want to make so many more of these. This would be an amazing gift, especially it's January, a lot of us are starting to think about what kind of trips do we wanna take this year? What kind of family trips do we wanna take? Personal trips. Uh, this would be a great gift if you're having like a family trip to make for some of the adults in the family or some teenagers especially. This is a great little teenager bag, especially if you made it a crossbody. Perfect for teens. And I gotta be honest, if you make yourself one of these and you take it out and about, your friends and family are going to ask you to make one because it is so cute and so useful. So I hope you love making this as much as I do. Thank you again to Sophisticated Designs for allowing me to use your patterns. Go check them out. If there's any other patterns you wanna see on the channel, leave it down in the comment section below. I wanna make all of them. They're all so, so good. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Bye.